lately I'd been on the road a lot, so not really in any city. It's just like here for a night and then we're on to the next. Right. Yeah. You're not really a local musician anymore. Now you're just like, you're a, a gypsy. Yeah. A gypsy. Basically. <laughs> I was going to call you a satellite musician. Satellite. satellite musician. All right. I like, like it. I just see I before, before all the Corona stuff, like, yeah, I saw you just like every single city in the country. And then I was just like, just different you just hire a band it's the most incredible thing i've never seen another musician do that is there a name for it where you just Um, hire a band and then be like i'm gonna hire you guys well there's different traditions like the old chuck berry method was he never had a band he would roll in the town and the local union or whatever would arrange a band for him interesting it is similar to that concept but i took it more into like the super jam concept which do you guys know Matt Butler and Everyone Orchestra? I, I know At, Everyone, Everyone Orchestra. Orchestra yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of, I mo- modeled it more after that, but where they're completely freeform, they don't do any right, songs yeah. where I'll, you know, play some of my songs and cover songs and stuff like that. So there was different, you know, pools of, of people I took to model that concept. It's, it's got to just be so nerve wracking though. Like being like, okay, it isn't, it isn't. Uh, well, like, I can't imagine me like reaching because you do. You reach out way early in advance, and it's like, hey, it's like three months. We like for you to play, uh, learn all these songs, and then we're gonna go play and everything. Yeah, like yeah, that. learn this song. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I did when you Whoops. like when you when you, when, uh, when you hired us to do it. Like, I, I did learn the song. <laughs> yeah. Learn it, yeah. <laughs> when you hired us to do it, I was like, holy fuck, I got a lot of work to do. So I, that was all I did for like weeks and weeks. But I I can't imagine like. Is Doing that every night of the week? No. <laughs> With a different band? Yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, how the, how the hell do you just like show up and just be so... Because when you showed up, I didn't know what to expect from you. And you were just like so calm about yeah. it. I'm like, you haven't even heard us play one. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, don't, you don't know. I like, was trusting this guy right, mainly. Right, right, you guys yeah. met him. You talked to him. And I, that's how we got at the gig. But like, you, you didn't know it like... I don't know. It's That's just, part of the fun, though. Yeah, I guess so. Because why would you take it if you couldn't, well, couldn't do it? But. Yeah. it and I, I was playing with a band for a while back in Northwest Indiana. And I don't want to say it got to the point where it was going through the motions, but, you know, you get so comfortable with certain people that it's like, I know every time the drummer's going to do the same turnaround, the violinist is going to do this or whatever. So it's like this group, the Joe Marsnick Band, every night you have to be completely open and in the moment. You know, you're using your ears. You can't go through the motions. It's not possible. Like, you yeah. haven't played with with these people before so what i find typically is that everyone is on their toes and they're actively engaged that is true so even if you don't you know we've never played together we're so trusting in the moment that we have to get this right yeah that we're giving you that extra effort that when you have a band that's played for years and not saying they take a night off but you have this more laid-back approach of okay i know the music i don't have to be so present in it yeah. where it's like oh crap we've never played together we've never rehearsed we gotta like really make sure this is going on yeah right. do you advertise that though do you be like we've never played together like put that on the flyer and then or do you think less people would show up if that was the case because as a jam band musician i would be like holy fuck they've never played together i want to go see that well most people in the scene that's what they want is something it's, different every is the night. jam yeah exactly and so the one of the cool parts i like is do you know go through three-fourths of the show before i say that yeah, yeah, yeah. because it blows everyone away they're like you guys sound like a tight band. And I'm like, yep. Half the time you've just met that person, you know, 10 minutes before we're about to start. Yeah, Cause it's it a win win either way. Cause it's like, Oh, like look how awesome we are. We never played to each other. And then if we suck, we're like, yeah, well, we never, well, we never, yeah. so. <laughs> we've got the out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. It was first night. Come back tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's, it is a, it is a wild thing to have to do because it's not just about pulling the musicians together. It's also that you're booking yourself and you're managing yourself. So you have to, oh, yeah. you have to never be, ends. Yeah. That's, I, I was thinking about that this morning as I was kind of like, like thinking about stuff to ask you. I was like, I get stressed out when I know I have to book something just for like, you know, like a few months out. Once I get down to, the, to like, the, the, like the like the wire, I start getting anxiety. But you have to then put together a band too. Mm-hmm. With, and like you don't use just like local guys. Like you'll you'll use pretty big names a lot of the time. To like, yeah, it all depends. You know, like if the budget's there to fly people in or, or use someone more established. Yeah. But then it, it works both ways because then you have a name to help advertise. Sure. And that's what I found trying to break into new markets when I was playing with that other band. It was like it was impossible to go to a different town and they've never heard of you. Yeah. How are you supposed to sell tickets? You know, no, you're lucky if you team up with another band, but then you're opening and have to, crowds not there. So when I can say, you know, say I go to San Francisco and I remember the first time we played, we almost sold the club out, you know, over 200 tickets. It was because I had Tony Hall there with us and Joey Porter. So like they already have a name value, still a brand new band. So it's like, 
all right. these different yeah, it's, factors. It's ingenious. It's the life hack. Yeah, yeah it's, in, it's, it's ingenious, but yeah. like, holy fuck! Like, it's it, it would it it's would. It's a lot of work. It, not a lot of the work. It was just the anxiety level for me would be through the roof. Well, I, you know, I don't think I can handle. That. But you got guys like Tony Hall and people like that. You you know you're gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, it's gonna be good. Well, you know? it's improvisation. You know yeah. that, that is a skill that if you have anxiety, you know that's it's not gonna work out well for you. You know because yeah. the whole idea of improvisation is to be in the moment. Sure. And and react and so it's almost gotten to the point now where it's like it's it's such a rush of adrenaline yeah. that you get addicted to it yeah and so it's it was like definitely a lot of fun wouldn't you like to have a set band i'm like no it takes all the fun away yeah, yeah. i can see that but but there is one other cool thing that after so then you have the initial we've just met each other that's maybe we play one night or four nights but then a the cool part that I'm lucky for is then to know you guys for, you know, year, two years or whatever yeah. and get to play. And so you develop this chemistry over a long period of time. Like Steve, the keyboard player last night, I've been playing with him for seven years. He might only play four or five times a year, but each time that connection is strong, but it's not going through the motions because we haven't been playing every night. Right. You know, so it's like we know each other, but it's still new and it's still exciting. Yeah. yeah. And you have this like chemistry that's building over years. It's a cool camaraderie too, because like there is these moments on stage when you get to these like these peak jams and it's like it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, like when you when you're communicating on that level where you just feel that everything's going perfectly yep. and you get there once or twice with that with that person and years can go by, but you still have those moments on stage together. Man. So when you play together every once in a while, even though you've been doing it over the course of seven years, maybe a couple times a year or whatever, it's still like, hey, it's like having a conversation with an old friend, you know, or like an old oh. war buddy. You know what I mean? Big time. And not only that, I feel like we live for that one moment. Yeah. You know, like if every night or every show you can have that one moment where it clicks and you get lost in the song and maybe something unexpected happens, for me, like that's a good night. You know, like, sure. yeah. I'd like to play the song perfect and nail the chord changes and get the melody without flubbing something. But like the end of the day, no one's going to remember that yeah. unless like you really messed up or like right. dropped your guitar or something. Yeah, right. But like, it was like, Oh my God, whatever song that was, they went way out for like 10 minutes. And it's like, that's what you remember from that night. Right. So how do you set up a band to facilitate that idea? You yeah. know, and highlight that potential. This past weekend, we played for three nights. So the first night was kind of like the feeling out because we had um, George Geekus play bass with us from New Orleans. It was the first time I met him. And so the first night, you know, it was good. But by the second night, it was like no one had to say anything. We were just like right off to the races. It felt good from the first moment. And, you know, no one's worried about playing the songs. It's like he was comfortable then. We were comfortable. And it's like, that's the best. And you kind of uh, warrant it that like it's, that's gonna happen just because you're not rehearsing or anything right. like that. Like it, I would rather not yeah. rehearse. <laughs> and, <laughs> See, and this is my unpopular opinion last week. It's like practicing is for losers. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's what he said last week. <laughs> or rehearsing is for losers. Yeah. Just well, learn the songs and show up. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you gotta pre you gotta preface that though. No, I know you gotta practice. <laughs> you yourself have to rehearse. Yeah, it, no, yeah, you rehearse. And, and that's like this Band also like I guess I should weird said. sense of humor of like I get to see where everyone's at is like how much do you respect the music you know are yeah. you going to show up yeah. and know the stuff or are you going to show up and be like oh, I kind of listened to it one time you know oh. show me how that goes yeah right like like with George he showed up knew all the songs wasn't reading any music and it's like that's the highest level of respect right there. yeah yeah you know and you just come in play it out cold because then you're not wasting everyone's time. We don't oh, have know. to spend two hours in a sound check just running forms. Yes, yeah, so I did. You, I could, I could, I could read sheet music. And what, that was another cool part, too, is this is the first time I've ever been hired for somebody where you send me sheet music. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, fuck Especially yeah. Especially guitar hey, player. Man, I try to make it as easy as I possible yeah, for you. Yeah, you got to, right? So there's no fuck-ups. But, yeah, I memorized all of it. And that's the way you gotta do it. And then it makes it even that much more fun for you yeah. looking at it because you're like, bro, I sent you charts, yeah, yeah. I sent you notation. <laughs> yeah, you got I no sent excuse. You the tracks that you didn't even. It's like, and the no dog ate my charts, man. Yeah. <laughs> the dog ate my Dropbox, bro. <laughs> the dog ate my Dropbox. <laughs> yeah. I actually have. There's two questions I want to ask. When you reach out to, to these bigger names, do you typically? What's it like trying to get? A lot of those guys are busy and they got shit going on. What's it like trying to reach out to them? Yes and no, though, because ev no one plays everything. Every night yeah so, so a lot of these touring bands will have a set schedule and right. then we'll have time off in between 
So something like what I'm doing is almost advantageous for them because they don't have to then join another band. They can just pick up a couple of gigs throughout the year when they're off. Right. So it kind of works out good in that respect. It's just lining the schedules up is the hardest part. Right. Because, yeah, you know, like say we really like the lineup I did last night. Well, to get all three of those guys in a normal time. Yeah. I feel like I have to preface everything I say with that. Yeah. You know, prior to pandemic, like to get all those three of those guys might only be able to happen once or twice a year. Right. Because, you know, Jason's with String Cheese and they have their schedule and Steve's got his. And it's like, so, so a lot of times, and this happened a lot down at um, Green Parrot in Key West. John loved that lineup with Steve and Jason and Tony. And he's like, I want that exact lineup. Yeah, I was so lucky just to be able to do it once, oh, you know? I didn't even like, think about that. Yeah. I, I can't make this happen, you know? So I'm begging these guys all year long, and half the time they don't know their schedule yet. So yeah. it's like, it is very tricky, but it's also one of the reasons why I have to do it myself. Because if I asked an agent to come in and book it, they're going to be like, okay, well, tell me who can play this gig, you know, oh, six I months see. down the road. And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, Steve, but maybe not. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. It's crazy. That's You literally have to do it yourself because yeah. of that dynamic. Yeah, well, and it's like all these our personal relationships so you know it's not like going through one agent to talk to this guy and then another agent so do you, do you ever find that barrier where you have to where like if you're reaching out to somebody you have to go through their manager or something oh, yeah yeah i'd say about half of of the artists will have you know an agent or a manager or something that you know and that's just it's easier for them I and mean, they keep it organized you know us musicians are not the most well organized folk I feel that that's why i want a manager real bad <laughs> one of the risks of doing what you do is there has to have been scenarios where you've met somebody like the night of and just didn't click with them. Has that ever happened? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> I don't want to name names. Sure, but yeah, yeah. There, there was, you know, and you guys know my songs aren't hard, but if you don't have an idea of what's going on, you can't like BS your way through. Oh, right. no, yeah, you can't bullshit it at all, like it, at all. So, and, and the worst is bass players because like <laughs> keys you can just drop out. Yeah, but course. if the bass player doesn't know the changes, it's glaringly obvious yep. right on the downbeat that they didn't hit the right chord. Right. So, yeah, there was one scenario where the bass player just didn't learn any of the tunes and it was like well now what are we gonna play for three hours you know Fuck. we can do some cover tunes but it'd be nice to play some of my original music yeah of course and so yeah once you go through like two or three and they're total train wrecks in front of people you're like ah all right well can you see anything let's do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we'll stretch it for out. 20 minutes just, Fuck, man. just swap out the bass for guitar and just but, change but, instruments with them yeah <laughs> that's oh, yeah. a good point <laughs> <laughs> there's only like one example where it was like really truly not bad but it was just like you get disappointed because you know what the potential could be yeah oh yeah i've been there and, and it's sure. not that no one's a great musician half the time the better musicians they are the lazier they get exactly because they think their talent affords them the luxury of not having to learn the song 100 percent, man yeah i know and it's like it doesn't matter you know what level you're at that's just comes back to respect like if you respect the situation you're going to learn the song exactly